Mark Vetri, great chef out of Philadelphia. In his cookbook, Mastering Pasta, he writes, a recipe doesn't just work or not work. The cook makes a recipe work. That is the most important thing you have to understand when making pasta or doughs or any recipe for that matter. In the end, it's on you to execute the recipe correctly to your tastes. Cause a book ain't eating the food. You are. With that in mind, let's jump right into it. Made in gnocchi, we've made orchetti with semolina and water dough. Today we're gonna make egg dough. But to be good at pasta, you have to be a student of pasta. That means you have to learn from people who've learned from masters. And these are some of the masters that I learned from. This is the pasta book we made orchetti from. This is from Evan Funky, along with Mark Vetri. The two have very different approaches to an egg dough. So today we're gonna make Evan's recipe. It's simpler, Mark has a bit more going on in it, but it's a different approach. So I'm gonna put the recipe right here and we're gonna measure it out, but the measuring is not so important. You have to think of it as a variable. If you make this in the summer versus the winter, you may need more moisture or it may be a little bit dry. Like my skin is dry as hell. That's telling me that the proportions in here might need to be tweaked. So as long as you understand that it's not about the recipe. When I write a recipe or when I follow somebody else's recipe, I'm taking that as a loose guideline and I know that there may be problems that come across that I'm gonna have to use my culinary judgment and experience to solve on the spot. For the flour, we're going with this Italian organic double zero flour, which is a much finer ground flour than all purpose. We're gonna go with one pound or 454 grams. We're gonna measure out 258 grams of whole egg. Now using the grandma egg cracking method, I know a lot of people like to only use egg yolks, which is fine, but whole eggs are great. The yolks give the elasticity and the whites give the structure. Just whip them up. Now sift some flour onto the board and create a deep well out of the flour with high walls and then pour in the beaten egg. Using a fork, gently pull flour from the wall of flour a little bit at a time, carefully working it into the egg until the egg resembles pancake batter consistency. The egg will now be stable enough to start to fold in the flour with a bench scraper until the dough ball forms and you can begin to knead the dough. This is where you need to start to understand humidity levels in your environment and gain a feel as to when your dough doesn't want to take any more flour. And then just work it till it forms a dough ball. As you knead, the dough will start to pick up any flour on the board, which is of course is what we want, but I know it's drier today. And I know it's easier to add flour to a dough than it is to take it away. So don't feel like you need to incorporate all of the flour into the dough before you start kneading. If you feel the dough has enough flour, start to scrape that flour off the board and sift out any dry bits and keep that on the side and use as needed. As you can see, there's a little bit of flour still on the board. I'm gonna use that to show you how the dough picks it up as you knead it. And you wanna keep that in mind because if you're kneading dough and you have lots of flour on the board, it can go from perfectly hydrated to dry in no time. So you have to keep that in mind. And as you can see, as I'm kneading it, it's picking up some of that flour off that board. Now let's talk about a couple of kneading techniques. The idea is to take one hand and fold the dough onto itself and with the same hand, push it away from you using your palm. Then with the other hand, you're just rotating it about a quarter turn and you're just gonna keep repeating that over and over again for about three to five minutes. Alternatively, you can use what is referred to as the grandma method, where the same idea is in play. You're just using both your hands, folding the dough onto itself, all with the idea of building gluten and folding air into the dough to make it really nice and supple and delicious. After about five minutes of kneading, it should look like a slightly tacky dough. And I have this little crease in the bottom end that I wanna seal and I can do so with a little squirt bottle. Now wrap it in plastic wrap. Evan has a whole method for wrapping the dough in plastic with all of these little pleats that prevent any hard edges from forming as it rests. This is really important only if you're gonna roll out the dough into a single sheet with a mozzarella or a rolling pin, but I like to do it regardless. Then just let it rest on the counter for 15 minutes. The goal for it is to be the perfect balance between elasticity and extensibility. So if it's too elastic, then it's not gonna be easy to roll out, it's gonna snap back into place, and it's gonna be on the tougher side. But if it's too elastic, it won't ever hold its shape. And obviously gluten development is an important part of this and there's really two ways to do it. One is by kneading, which we just did, and then another one is with 
high. So by alternating the two, we don't have to work as hard to knead it for like 15 minutes straight. We can knead it for five minutes, which is what we just did. We got it to this point, which is a good point. We're gonna let it rest for 15 minutes. That's gonna help relax it even more, make it even easier for us to knead. Working more air into the dough and gluten and getting it to another phase. So like, could you just take this and make pasta? Sure. But if you're gonna go the extra mile to make your own pasta, I like to follow a method that is sort of proven. And I know Evan Funky's methods are. It comes out really fantastic if you just give it the time and the love that it deserves. So 15 minutes rested in plastic, and then we're back at it. You can see the humidity in the plastic, which is helping the dough hydrate as it rests. You'll start to see a little sheen to the dough. That's a good sign that there's gluten starting to develop. Now is when I'm gonna start to really feel the dough and try to understand what it's going through. And as I'm kneading it, I'm feeling it's a bit hard and it's beginning to feel a bit dry. So there's a few things you could do. You could wet your hands and then continue to knead it, gradually working more moisture into the dough, or you can use that spray bottle. Maybe you're in a humid environment rather than a dry environment like me, so you might have a dough that's too tacky, in which case you might want to add a little bit of flour at this point. So that's where the judgment starts to come to play. And then just proceed with another round of three to five minutes of kneading and then wrap it again in plastic and let it rest on the counter for another 15 minutes. Now you can tell after this second round of kneading, the dough has a totally different look than it did before. Fifteen minutes later, we're ready for another round of kneading. The dough should have some bounce back when you poke it. As you can see, it's just so much more hydrated. Two rounds of the kneading should be enough, but I'm gonna go for another quick round because to me, it just feels like it could use a little bit more kneading. You see the look of this dough? That is the look that I want my dough to have. You can definitely under knead dough, but you can't really over knead it. So when in doubt, just knead a little bit more. Now we're just gonna wrap it up in plastic one more time and it's gonna rest overnight in the fridge. You don't really need to wrap the dough like that. His thought process behind it is to create no hard edges around it so that when he rolls out a sheet, it's perfectly circular. Again, if you're using a pasta machine, you don't have to worry so much about that. But I just like working through the mindset of somebody who thinks like that and understanding why they did it. It's gonna go in the refrigerator for about two to three hours. And I'm telling you, you could use it right now. But to get it at that optimal balance of elasticity and extensibility, we're gonna let it sit in the refrigerator for two to three hours at a minimum and up to overnight, which I may in fact do. So we'll check back in when it's ready. Now this is what you're gonna get if you let this sit overnight in the refrigerator. This incredibly soft, supple dough. It's still bouncy, but it's much softer. It's hydrated. We can open it up. It's basically everything you want a pasta dough to look like and feel like. If you did your job right, you can actually see the air pockets you kneaded into the dough. That's a sign you did a good job. Now this is your master egg pasta dough. You'll make tagliatelle out of this and parpadelli and you'll use rich meat sauces on it and it's elastic so it's great for filled pastas. So raviolis, tortellinis, all the stuff like that. And of course you can make most other shapes with it too. But generally pastas are matched to sauces and this is emblematic of the north where they had a little bit more money and they could afford the eggs. Whereas in the south where they use semolina and just water, you can see there's sort of an economic reason for why certain parts of Italy do the things they do. So now I'm gonna wrap up one of these sides. I'm gonna roll out a little bit of fettuccine. We're gonna make a little bit of fresh pasta with uh, like an Alfredo butter Parmesan sauce. Cover that on the show. I'll leave a link down below. Run through it real quick. I'm just gonna cut the dough into quarters and we're gonna roll out a quarter of the dough at a time in the pasta machine. Get a tiny bit of flour onto the pasta roller, but you don't want a lot. If it's properly hydrated, you're really not gonna need the flour to roll it out. Start at the lowest setting and then you work your way up. I'm just gonna kinda push it into a little bit of a rectangle or, or a square just so it's sort of mimics the final shape I'm looking for. So now just run it through the widest setting and then fold it in thirds on top of each other. That sort of helps to keep that nice shape as well as add a bit more structure to the dough. One more time. Drop it down to one. Pop it down to two. Pop it down to three, then to four, to five. You can see sort of those air bubbles 
that we worked in. It's a really beautiful dough. Now we're gonna go to the last one, which is six, which is gonna give us more of a fettuccine. If we went to seven, that's gonna give us a thinner, more tagliatelle noodle. Square off the edges and cut the sheet in half. So now we're just gonna run it through the tagliatelle setting. Now we're just gonna make a little fettuccine alfredo. We're gonna grate up some Parmigiano Reggiano on the finest setting of the box grater. We're gonna cut up about a half stick of butter, get a small pot of boiling water, heavily salted. There's no salt in the pasta, so all of the salt's gonna be in the water. And then we just wanna get a pan on, really low heat. We kinda just wanna get the pan warm. We don't wanna get it too hot. Now drop the pasta and you're gonna cook that for about three minutes. Fresh pasta is actually more forgiving than dried pasta, so like there's less of a chance of you missing al dente. So after about three minutes of cooking, you wanna transfer the fettuccine to the butter, reserving the pasta water and using that to emulsify with the butter to make the sauce. Cook for a minute or so on low heat and then kill the heat and you wanna toss in some Parmigiano Reggiano until it melts into the sauce and gets nice and creamy, coats the noodles and it's ready to serve. Something I always forget to tell you when making pasta is that always serve it in a warm dish. Cold dish is gonna cool a pasta down way too fast, where a warm dish is gonna keep the pasta nice and warm and flowing. Hear that sound? I wanna make love to this bowl of pasta real quick. So at the end of the day, this recipe is gonna yield you a really good dough, but it's on you to figure it out. You've gotta to get to know the dough, get acquainted with it, become friends with it, practice, do this a few times and you'll get it. And once you nail it, you're gonna be making some of the best pasta. I promise you it's a skill worth mastering. Thank you all for watching. That's all that I have today. I'll see you all next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.